What's going on guys, Jota here, your coach of the Seattle Seekings for Season 2 of the Ultimate Battle League, going up against Irish Emerald, our Week 5 opponent, coach of the Wexford Waylords, with quite a disgusting roster if I might add. Uh, I don't know how he got those transactions, but it's looking pretty good for him now. I brought Bronzong, Tornadus Therian, Mega Houndoom, Zygarde, Sloking, and Rabambi, while he brought Zara Aura, Sylveon, Palisand, Hoopa Unbound, Mega Scizor, and Lycanroc Dusk. Now, it's worth mentioning that I went into this match not liking my prep as I had to kind of put it off to the last minute and wasn't super optimistic about my matchup, but luckily the things I did prep for, the the most being Zeraora, Hoopa Unbound, and Mega Scizor, all did show up. So with that, let's jump right into the match and see just what happened. Both of us are coming off of a 2-2 two and two, uh, start to the season, so we're both in, you know, very hungry for our for our third win to go over 500 here. I lead off with Bronzong while he's going to go and lead off with Zero Aura. Now, I prepped pretty hard for this thing. I put a lot of different uh, answers for this on several guys of my team, but I know full well that as long as this thing's able to just Volt Switch as it does on the first turn here and just zip around, it's going to be a huge problem for me. But I'm not too worried about it in the very short term. I'm just going to go ahead and get my rocks up on my Bronzong. So as the Palisand comes in, I now have rocks. I think it's going to go for rocks and we'll just be having rocks up the whole game because I know once I get my webs up, I'm not going to want to defog everything away and then struggle to get it back up later because then I have to rely on both Bronzong and uh, Rabambi being alive for as long as possible. So with both rocks on the field, I'm just going to go ahead and get my webs off as he switches out, as I said I would, and he's going to go into Sylveon. Now Sylveon, I'm guessing, is a max spadef build, judging by what I saw. Uh, it was a very passive build. So I'm going to go get my webs on the ground, on the field here. There really is not much that I can do to this thing with my Rabombi, especially considering it's a Scarf Rabombi. Yes, I'm running Scarf webs this week because I totally just want to get webs up and then switch out which doesn't really bluff anything because I'm switching out here into my Bronzong. He's going to go for Baton Pass. This is a max spadef or near max spadef slow pass uh, Sylveon here. So it's going to slow pass into Palisand, which is the guy that he wants in every time that I have Bronzong in so he can go for a Shadow Ball. Little does he know I'm actually heat proof. It's never going to come up in this game, but I'm heat proof this week for Fire Punches. And so because of that, Bronzong... Probably has no business staying in anyway, because if he does try to go for an Earth Power, it's going to hurt. But I'm going to go into Rabombi again, switch back in, as he's going to go for a Toxic. So, first Mon of the match is Poisoned, and I do have a few different moves that I can do to at least put some hurt on this thing. But if it wants to just continuously shore up, there really isn't a whole lot I can do, because I didn't bring Energy Ball, although he doesn't know that. So he's going to go out, probably fearing the Energy Ball, and he's going to go into his Sylveon, as I think I just clicked Moonblast here to put some chip on it. So he's gonna get caught in the webs, of course. Not that it's really gonna matter because it's already super slow. And as you can see here, Moonblast is gonna do next to nothing. It's gonna do a tiny bit of chip there. So it, it's really not gonna help me too much at this point. So I'm gonna take a little bit of uh, poison damage, which is all kinds of lovely. And I'm gonna be swapping out here because I know that I have no business being in on this thing. Back into Bronzong we go. And knowing my luck, probably a pass back into Palisand, but nope, he's going to go for Wish on this turn uh, to get some, some Wish damage back up on somebody. I don't remember who this actually triggers on. It might just be on the Sylveon, but uh, no, it's definitely not because he would catch a Flash Cannon. So he's going to go out into Raphael, which I want to say is the Zara Aura, as I'm just going to go ahead and click, I think I click Future Sight here. That sounds about right. Yeah, I click Future Sight here. This is a, this is a item I took from the pages of the uh, Seattle Star Raptors NPA Season 3, where they used uh, Future Sight Bronzong and picked up a couple kills with that Bronzong. Uh, I'm not going to be nearly as lucky as my Culberberry is going to trigger here on the knockoff. So that's going to be good at least. I'm going to hit off a Signal Beam. So that's going to, you know, cancel out the Wish Health and more a little bit here. And he's going to go for Plasma Fist. He's going to kill Bronzong. There really isn't a point in me trying to save uh, this Bronzong, so I'm just going to let it kind of happen. And my Bronzong is going to go down, but luckily for me, the the Zero Aura is going to go ahead and take the Future Sight hit, and it's going to lose a whopping amount of health. It's going to go down to like 5 to 10% to the point where there's no way it can switch out and try to come back in on rocks. I don't believe he has any defoggers or any kind of clearance, and Mega Houndoom definitely outspeeds with webs on his side of the field, so a nice free pickup 
uh, of the Zero Aura there for Mega Houndoom. Kind of funny how much I prep for this thing. I, I have like a couple different like ground moves on, on things that probably don't need it, but it's all so I can handle this Zero Aura. So a little unfortunate that it goes down a little easier than I'd predicted. But now the Lycanroc Dust comes in and this Lycanroc Dust is gonna give me a lot of trouble because it can Accelerock for free and take out both my Mega Houndoom and my Tornadus Therian should I leave them in. Or I guess the Zer the Tornadus Therian might be a roll. Uh, I'm not really sure at this point in the match. So I go into my Slowking to catch that Accelerock. And even on Slowking, it's still going to do a nice 15 to 20%, which is some good chip for him. He's going to go out fearing the Scald. Plot twist, I actually don't have Scald. I ran Flamethrower this week. Just Flamethrower. Uh, Toxic Protect. Um, and Slack Off and Flamethrower so I can handle the Mega Scizor. But I have absolutely no answer for this uh, this Hoopa Unbound on the Slow King. But to be fair, it never really was meant to be my answer for this. I'm gonna protect just to scout his move out, see what he's gonna go for. Obviously he's gonna go for Dark Pulse, but it was more of a matter of whether or not he was gonna predict. I'm pretty sure that this is a Specs build on Hoopa Unbound here, so I don't really have to worry about it outspeeding me a whole lot, at least I don't think. So I'm gonna go into my Rabombi here, but you know, Rabombi is all nice and good, but it's it's so frail that it just falls to a Dark Pulse after the rocks damage. So there really wasn't much there. Rabombi was a nice little sack. So I'm gonna go into Tornadus Therian here. My, I guess, answer for Hoop Unbound because it's got U-Turn and even a U-Turn from this would do, with almost no investment, would do at least 75% so I could get, you know, anything to pick up that kill later. So I'm gonna U-Turn on the Palisand as it comes in because, you know, he's not stupid he's not gonna leave it in which is the one problem i have with relying on u-turn to challenge hoop unbound because what's to stop them from going into something super bulky that can take a u-turn my only other move on that tornadus was uh heat wave so it really wasn't gonna be <clears throat> much of an answer there anyway so now with zygarde on the field zygarde is looking decently here i think the palisand could break a sub if i opted to go for it but i'm gonna try my luck anyway and go for that substitute and we're gonna see just what would happen here if he goes for an Earth Power. Now, Earth Power is gonna go off and it is gonna break my sub, but would you have it? That's a crit. So that honestly doesn't tell me anything as to whether or not, I think it still would break the sub either way, but it doesn't actually tell me anything as far as if that specific Earth Power would have broken the sub at that moment. Maybe it was a roll, maybe something else, I don't know. But what I do know is the Scizor is gonna come on the field, the Mega Scizor that hasn't Mega Evolved yet. And it's going to get caught in the webs, of course, and I'm going to go for Glare. Now, Glare, I, this is kind of like Zygarde sets can honestly be very similar to Superior sets just because they're both snake Pokemon and they get a lot of the same moves. So I decided to run it like I would a Superior with Sub Glare, uh, an offensive move, and then a setup move in this case rather than, you know, a hidden power or something like that. So my... Uh, my Zygarde is going to take a bullet punch and it's only going to receive maybe, maybe what, 20, 30 points of damage, not a whole lot. And I'm just going to go for Coil. Now, given what he was going for here with the, with the bullet punches and how little damage he was doing regardless, I probably would have been better off going for Dragon Dance or, you know, putting Dragon Dance on this rather than Coil. But I don't know. It just felt like the right thing to do. And maybe the U-turn would have broken the sub were it not for the Coil. I'm honestly not sure. I'd have to, I'd have to check Calcs or something like that. But point important point here is I have a plus one, plus one Zygarde behind sub up against the Palisand here. So that's going to be a pretty good spot to be in. The Palisand doesn't have any way to really threaten me. It might break the sub, like I said, with Earth Power, but that's all it's got. It can't toxic me. It can't do anything. I'm ground Z this week. So now at plus two, plus two, I'm going to go ahead and fire off my ground Z in just a moment here, but not before he tries to pop my sub with Earth Power. This one's not going to crit, but combined with the U-Turn is gonna be more than enough damage. So we still don't actually know if a full power U-Turn breaks my sub. I think it does, but I don't have proof. Anyway, going for that Earth Power, or excuse me, the Thousand Arrows, the Z Thousand Arrows on the Zygarde. I ran the Calc and it, and I came to a conclusion that at the attack investment I was in, I shouldn't kill if this is a max HP, max defense Palisand. And it was near full health anyway you know, when we started this fight. So 
or it is full health, excuse me, but it goes and dies. Even at plus two, I had the calc set to like 94% max. So that means this must have been either a mixed bulk or maybe even like not that bulky at all on the defensive side. Maybe it was max vedef, I'm honestly not sure. But because of the way it was set up, it is gonna die to the thousand arrows. And at plus two, and the Mega Scizor's bullet punches aren't really gonna hurt, but it goes and gets paralyzed anyway. So I'm gonna get some damage off with my thousand arrows. And I'm just going to go fire off again. I'm going to keep wheeling it down. And a little bit of hacks goes in my way here with two turns of para in a row. I'm going to go fire off another thousand arrows. It's going to bring this thing down to, you know, negligible health to where, you know, flicking it will kill it. It is going to break through this time. It is going to bullet punch. Important to note that were it not for that para hacks kicking in, he would have been able to hit me three times with bullet punch, which at that range would have been just enough damage to kill me, leaving his mega scissor in on just a tiny bit of health. Now, that health might not have mattered too much. He still would have gone down, but he still would have been able to get another bullet punch on whatever I brought in, which probably would have had to be the, the slow king or something like that. But anyway, the... Uh, Hoopa U comes in, and I honestly messed this up to where I forgot to speed creep Zygarde to outspeed Hoopa U after webs. I think the difference was like three points, so had I just made it a little less bulky, or maybe taken away the eight EVs I had put into attack, I probably would have been able to add just enough speed to outspeed that Hoopa U, and then I would have taken that out and been rid of it way earlier into the match, which would have been really nice at this point. Because I'm gonna be needing, I'm gonna be needing my Zygarde to be alive for later, as you can see here. The Sylveon comes in. I'm gonna get a little uh, U-turn damage off, of course, because the the Hoopa Unbound switched out, and looks like I'm gonna have Mega Houndoom in on the Sylveon. Now, this is where I reveal a little tech. I put Throat Chop on my Mega Houndoom this week because I wanted to stop the Sylveon not only from going for Hyper Voice, but I also wanted to stop it from heal belling and preventing any of my paralysis or toxic that I was putting on other mons here and as you can see it is going to work successfully it is going to stop the sylveon and it's going to force it to be unable to attack because i believe hyper voice was its only offensive move i'm gonna hit it with a sludge bomb and poison it which is going to be really really nice as he's going to go for a slow pass i think back into the hoopa unbound but at this point it did enough damage or sorry the lichen rock excuse me it did enough damage where the sylveon can be sacked off conveniently at any point in time because there's no saving it with the amount of damage it has between the, you know, rocks and, and even if it came in, like, I outspeed it after web, so there's really no saving it. I think even Slowking outspeeds it behind web, so Slowking is going to be in on the Lycanroc and he's going to reveal Swords Dance. Not that it's really going to matter because it turns out he's been afraid of me having Culberberry on the Slowking the whole time, even though I did have Culberberry on my Bronze Song. I had Wakanberry on this... Uh, Slow King in order to handle a Plasma Fist hit, but it doesn't end up actually mattering. So because of that, he's not going to go for the crunch that he reveals later on. A uh, little spoiler there. Uh, but I'm going to Toxic the Hoopa Unbound, which is going to be really, really helpful, which now puts me into the point of the game where if I can stall this out, I can win by taking out the Sylveon, taking out the Hoopa Unbound, and if I play my cards right, I may be able to Toxic the Lycanroc and stay alive here. Uh, but granted, I didn't know he had Crunch at this point, because if he had gone for it, I would it would have been a moot point. It probably would have been a 3-0 had he just clicked the the uh, the Crunch, because once he had killed the Slow King, the Mega Houndoom and the Tornadus fell like flies to Acceleroc. So Mega Houndoom is going to die to Dark Pulse on the way in, because I really didn't have a point to saving it, and it kind of needed I needed to sack something. So I go in one more time into my Tornadus to just try and do something. I really wish I had different moves. I wish I'd put Superpower on this this week. I'm kicking myself over it now thinking that how I didn't put Superpower on this. Because were I able to live, maybe if I had done like Superpower Charty Berry or something like that, I could have taken an Acceleroc and fired off a Superpower to finish off the Lycanroc and that would have put me into the put me into a much better spot here because at the health I'd be left with I could easily handle you know I could easily U-turn out on the Hoop Unbound and if that somehow didn't kill it Slow King takes the hit I come back in and I just go and kill it but instead I let my Tornadus there and go down probably just for the sake of it was gonna die either way and because I didn't have Scald we were playing we were playing a, a very risky game here and I didn't want him 
getting some Accelerock damage and then just going for Crunch, which he does end up doing anyway. But as you can see here, I am going to live. So had I swapped in, I would have died. I would have died to the to the, to the Crunch, I believe. I'm going to go for a Flamethrower, and it's just not going to be enough. It's going to leave him on one health. I'm going to protect just because I was kind of, I was, I don't know why I was thinking maybe I got lefties or something, but nope, I, I, I didn't. So he goes for crunch and would you have it? It's just a matter of him crunching again. And that is going to be game. It's going to be not a 2-0, believe it or not. It's going to be a 1-0 because he's going to die to his life orb. So it's going to be a 1-0 that Hoopa unbound, the only thing left. So a couple key takeaways of this game were basically my prep, which because like I said, I did kind of last minute. My prep wasn't terrible. I did prep fairly well for the for the things I did manage to take out. It's the things like the Hoopa and the uh, Lycanroc Dusk that I didn't prep perfectly for. And honestly, just putting Superpower on Tornadus, maybe swapping off Defog because I didn't actually end up using it, or maybe even swapping off Taunt or something like that would have been helpful. Having Superpower on there and maybe a Charty Berry rather than a Rocky Helmet would have been just what I needed to handle the Lycanroc. But oh well, you win some, you lose some. We're now at uh, two and three minus, or no, we're two and three plus three differentials. So I'm really not. In a, like, it's where it's week five, I'm, I'm three losses in, and I'm still not in a bad spot because of how much damage, uh, or because of how much, uh, that win against Silver Beanie put me over in the, uh, the differential department. So, anyway, next week we go up against the, uh, Nijmejin, uh, Nuzleafs, coached by Automatic. So, I hope you guys are excited for that. Hit the bell and like button, and I will see you guys all next week. Bye bye